Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. Right, so we finally got some details about Kingpin and the Yellow Jacket rework. Uh, they are up on Twitter, posted by Cam and I think UMCOC Jinx as well. And obviously, inevitably, there are a ton of YouTube videos about them. And uh, at the moment, I figured it's a good time for me to give my two cents about what I think about Yellow Jacket and Kingpin upcoming reworks. So we're gonna start with Kingpin and move on to Yellow Jacket. Uh, so let's just jump here. So I'm gonna use the infographic uh, kindly provided for Cam on Twitter, by Cam on Twitter. Right, so the most significant change is stats-wise, he is getting a significant prestige boost. He's actually moving up to fourth highest prestige champion in his own individual skill class. So now he's a legit prestige option, which is quite surprising. Uh, his base abilities include the fact that his uh, base region rate is reduced by 50%, which is very similar to Daredevil Hell's Kitchen, but unlike Daredevil's Hell's Kitchen, this guy can actually function using Suited Masteries because he shrugs them off, so that is worth pointing it out there. And obviously, because you're going to be stacking these Rage debuffs on you throughout the fight, you will actually be able to net some heal. Now, I personally am somewhat annoyed that they are just slashing these region rates consistently. I feel as if though they could very easily allow some champions to benefit from a willpower heal throughout the fight and it wouldn't be a big deal. It's not that potent of the region to begin with. But hey, here we are. Apparently, that's too powerful when put next to Cosmic Ghost Rider or whatever, right? Sure. Moving on, Rage, debuffs with no effect, 60% chance to purify non-Rage debuffs and gain one Rage, cooldown 0.5 seconds. There is an important thing, and that's probably the most important thing about Kingpin's kit in itself, is that there is a way how to artificially enhance this region rate 100% and kind of effectively make him debuff immune, so long as you don't get more than one debuff every half a second. And uh, that also requires synergy. I, I believe the synergy is with Hood and Joe Fixit, and that is the most unfortunate part. Because if you synergize with some part champions, then the champion who benefits from the synergy has to be absolutely insane. The best example here uh, would be, let's say, Thor Ragnarok can be a crazy, crazy champion, but he's just not good enough, even fully synergized up, to warrant using a full synergy team. But Ghost is, because Ghost takes in Hood on Wasp, and that's like one of the common trinities, and that's fairly common setup. Even that, at times, is an obstacle. But the point here is that the champion who requires on a synergy has to be worth it. And Kingpin seemingly will be a good champion, but he just won't be good enough for you to justify bringing in a synergy partner specifically for Kingpin in vast, vast majority of the endgame content. So I just kind of wish that they gave him that 100% there on the spot and that would make him a very, very desirable champion. I don't think he would have been OP. But now the way he is, uh, I'm going to break down the rest of the abilities, but I'm also going to just say flat out uh, that I don't think he's going to be used much. Is better than he was 100%. But I think uh, with everything that's changed about him, and plus the most important thing being tied into synergy, just means that, um, yeah, he's going to be nowhere near as popular as he could have been. Right, either way, let's move on. So every time you take damage, you also gain one rage stack, and that goes in cooldown for 20 seconds. So that is a fairly substantial long cooldown and likely will not be your main source of obtaining rage and also then enemy awaits or auto blocks and this is another thing that kind of annoys me because it doesn't stop opponents from doing that and there is fairly small sub pool of situations where that will actually happen kind of with falcon where falcon unlocks that crazy damage output only in matchups where opponents await and it's fairly similar with kingpin you need specifically a node that places a lot of debuffs on you or have opponent await a lot and that just does not happen in majority of the fights therefore again pushing him further and further into that niche scenario situation which does not scream day-to-day -day use or high desirability and then the rest of the kit is all right it's not bad but it's also not that impressive all right so incoming debuffs each increase his attack by 30 percent and combat power rate by five percent cool so he can get 
significant attack increase based on rage debuffs and also increased power rate that is always useful that's kind of neat it's pretty much what he had now just more potent i believe overpower when he has eight plus debuffs purify eight debuffs and gain stacking overpower buff for 15 seconds increasing attack by 250 percent and making his specials unblockable so that's a big fury but again in many fights it will be tricky to do and it won't happen all that frequently all that often and 15 seconds isn't that long amount of time for you to be able to fully capitalize on that now heavy attacks is pretty much the same as it was i think the fury might be more potent but the same idea you drop three heavies within a few seconds and gain a fury buff that he had already special one's pretty much the same once again is just more potent 14 second degen dealing 150% of modified attack while degen's active opponents suffer 65% defensive ability accuracy and 50% attack reduction cool that's what he had already special two you go unstoppable cool while unstoppable each champion's hits have 50% chance to grant one rage okay so after level two you can grant gain more rage stacks that that is probably going to be your go-to option in most cases Special 3, gain 4 rage and refresh all overpower buffs. Okay, that works as well. And uh, signature ability when enter the fight with 4 rage active. And that is quite a huge thing because with 4 rage active, you immediately gain 120% attack and 20% combat power rate. And then let's say if you shrug off suicides, that puts you at 6 rages immediately. And that is fairly significant boost. And when overpower ends, he has a chance to activate 5 rages with each having 90% chance to activate, I'm sure that depends on the ability. So overall, defensively, I don't think all that much changes for him. I think he's gonna be largely the same two fight, just pretend he's stun immune and you're gonna be pretty much fine. Um, offensively using this champion, I definitely see that there will be niche situations where you will want and where he might be one of the top options up there. Again, being able to be pseudo immune to all debuffs is a huge thing but i just don't think that he himself as a champion is good enough or has enough of a kit i personally don't plan to invest in kingpin anytime soon perhaps eventually i will once i see him in action and again keep in mind that these are all initial impressions and initial thoughts obviously my opinion might change if he ends up insane amounts of damage in average matchups but i believe for that he will either have to be in debuff heavy matchup uh, or where opponent awaits a lot and for that i also believe he will need that hood or joe fix it synergy but going in, in act seven or going in alliance war how often do you want to bring in hood or joe fix it so yeah i'm not entirely sure that it all comes together I was kind of hoping for a bit more, I'll be honest, but uh, again, I might change my mind once I see the fat guy back in action. Right, now let's look at the Yellow Jacket buff. And Yellow Jacket uh, has piqued my interest a bit more, and the first thing that I'm immediately going to say for Yellow Jacket is that seemingly his damage output is going to suck. I th think in vast majority of the fights his damage output is going to be subpar and it's not that much improved from what it is now it's probably going to be better with like increasing base stats and attack and whatnot but overall it just doesn't look like he's going to be able to hit hard those powers things will be more potent but he's not going to be the most exciting champion but let's go through everything bit by bit so 565 has quite high prestige as well as a six star now he's the seventh highest in class it's not quite as good as kingpin but still it does work uh for class prestige so to speak now his abilities on his base kit he has 70 percent energy resist and 35 percent physical resistance and that is quite huge because uh, unless we're talking about direct damage that will help you mitigate many many different forms of damage that will work against magic's limbo because that's energy damage then it's going to work against shocks against incinerates and a ton of different damage types and physical resist just makes him a lot a lot tankier and it also simultaneously ensures that he's going to be a lot more difficult to quake now due to physical resist because physical resist is like the one biggest achilles heel quake has 
besides true fact or true accuracy or something like that prevents her evading but yeah that is definitely quite annoying but overall i do like that kit put in there already like you can kind of draw some similarities to guardian uh, but you do not have that uh, bleed resist here unfortunately right his new mechanic is nuclear core and he starts at 40 charges and uh, these are going to be quite easy to gain and quite easy to maintain uh, you can go above 100 but if you have been above 100 charges for 12 consecutive seconds you're gonna kind of go in your nuclear meltdown that triggers a different effect which can potentially be helpful but ultimately is something you want to avoid because there is a great deal of utility hidden in the next line of text reduce enemies regen rate and increase potency of personal debuffs by one percent for each charge so you start with 40 from beginning that's not a debuff it's nothing at all nothing is really immune to it or can bypass it or shrug it off and you already from the very very first second of the fight reduce opponent's regeneration rate by 40 percent that's quite big but you can spend most of the fight at 100 slightly above 100 or slightly below 100 but in combination with the spare and placing more debuffs on opponent you will easily be able to hit that 100 percent barrier and you will be able to not only completely mitigate opponent's regeneration but also reverse it so you're going to be able to use yellow jacket in similar sense as people often use captain america infinity war or void and what's most important you're going to be able to access it very quickly and maintain it throughout the entire fight and you're not going to have to rely on having a debuff per se so that is a huge thing and that that plus energy and physical resist already makes him quite a big utility machine now the problem is that everything else about him is underwhelming past this point so again yellow jacket started so promising and up until here i was very very excited and reading the next lines my excitement kind of died down where it kind of settled on an acceptable level but truth to be told for both of the re these reworks i kind of expected a bit more yellow jacket however does seem to pique my interest a bit more ultimately i think possibly potentially mole man is going to be the best of the four champions that come out but if not then i am looking at yellow jacket before anything else and uh, that is to do with what we have talked about in here already basically reversing regeneration rate having huge energy resist and having also additional physical resist is super helpful but let's move on so uh how do you gain these uh charges so you have 60 percent chance to gain a charge by hitting or getting hit so just by fighting you're going to be gaining decently large amount of charges so on average you're going to gain three charges per five hit combo and uh yeah that that means you're, that's going to be quite quick you also gain 10 charges every time opponent launch special attack and that will immediately boost you up as well if you have been over 100 charges for 12 seconds any contact with opponent has 75 percent chance to deal 35 percent of his modified attack as physical damage reset core back to starting charge after now the question is how long does this phase last but ultimately this is a defensive ability this will turn yellow jacket into electro so you will either have to bring in champion like omega red or somebody else who is immune to passive damage dealt back to you like gambit is now like strife will be uh like dead will hell's kitchen can be or you're just gonna need to stay away from the guy because again any contact that means if he hits your block if you hit his block if you get hit or if you hit him has a 75 percent chance to deal damage back to you and if you're gonna go up against the stacked yellow jacket that's gonna be a whole lot of damage so yeah, there is that kind of like taunts defensive ability, which is without a doubt going to be quite annoying <laughs> on defense, right? And against unblockable special attacks, each hit expends 10 charges to reduce enemy attack by 75%. That's kind of fair enough. It can be very life-saving if opponents have unblockable special attacks. They're going to hit very weak in comparison. You're going to be able to survive that. But ultimately, everybody's goal is not to get hit by them, right? So let's move on versus mystic champions debuffs trigger and special activation instead uh and are paused during the special animations so he's gonna 
be a champion you probably don't want to fight with a mystic champion because that's going to place you well power things even if you don't get hit so you can have a lot trickier time to fight against the guy so we have a special one up to three power stings, 90% chance to inflict each, lasting 10 seconds, dealing 75% of modified attack on enemy special activation. But please do remember that those arc reactor charge thingies, nuclear cores, uh, increase the potency of each charge. So if you have, let's say, 70% more potent, then you can deal significantly more damage here with your power stings. Instead of 75%, you're going to be dealing 100, 120 up to 250% if you're at 100 charges. So that will make those power things more potent and uh, will deliver, hopefully, significant chunk of damage. Special 2, inflict 15 second 50% 50 petrify buff, and this is going to work extremely well with that nuclear core mechanic, where you're going to be easily able to heal reverse any opponent and mitigate their power gain buffs. Now, special three, inflict an indefinite power sting debuff dealing 215% of modified attack on enemy special activation. And this again can be affected by your nuclear charges so it can deal significantly higher amounts of damage. And here is kind of like the kicker. He has self synergy, which gives him access to slow, which is another fantastic piece of utility that I absolutely love in everybody's hit, especially if you can access it with your heavy attacks. So on heavy hit, expand 10 charges to inflict 10 seconds slow. So this is the way you can easily mitigate your charges to prevent meltdown and also keep opponents slowed for pretty much the entire fight. And that kind of like buffs him up a bit more where I'm rising my eyebrow and I am interested. I am interested in Yellow Jacket, I think. In Molman and Yellow Jacket are the two champions out of the four that I'm interested in more at the moment. Unfortunately, his signature ability <clears throat> is one of those where you just need SIG 200 or it's not really all that worth having. Anyways, so special one, if power thing lasts full duration, inflict 2.1 second stun, which is basically what they did before. So it's nothing huge. Special two, gain five charges when Petrify ends. It's irrelevant but the big reason why you do want to have him awakened is power sting has 100 percent chance to reapply itself chance decreases by zero percent each time this happens and this is with max sig so if you don't have him max sig you'll have smaller chance to reapply that power sting and it will have some sort of percentage reduction every time it happens so if you want to have guarantees that it will happen, you need to have him max sig. And this is the only way I believe how he can function in a longer matchup. And given that he looks like a champion that will struggle with the damage output, this is very important. So unfortunately, I think this is going to be kind of like the downfall of Yellow Jacket because nobody who ranks up a six star is going to be able or willing to give him 200 signature stones to get the best out of him. And I think this is a key mistake Abam has made here, where they made that signature ability so reliant on high SIG level. And uh, in current situation of the game, it's yeah close to impossible that anybody has or will invest in SIG 200 yellow jacket. Therefore, you will not really be able to rely on this ability, which is very important in this game. Ultimately, as I said before, I think Molman looks promising because you now can spend entire fights in Frenzy. And I think Yellow Jacket works as a utility machine. And when it comes to deciding between huge damage or more utility, I personally typically tend to go with utility. Uh, so Yellow Jacket could potentially end up being <clears throat> ranked up, maybe not to rank three, but possibly to rank two. And then we're going to see how we move on past this point. Uh, let me know what you guys think about both new champion buffs. Which one do you like more personally? Uh, with Kingpin, again, uh, just the, yeah, with Kingpin, I think it's a bit of a fail that for his best piece of utility, you need to rely on a synergy with an average or a crappy champion. Other than that, I would kind of like him. He probably will do some decent amount of damage, without a doubt. But I doubt that damage is going to be game-breaking and his utility 
certainly won't be by himself. So either way, let me know what you guys think. Which champion are you looking forward to the most? I must admit, personally, I am slightly disappointed in both of these two reworks. I do hope they come together better than they appear on the paper. But that being said, you guys have been absolute troopers if you have made it this far. And if you have, then why not do me the huge favor of hitting that like and sub button if you haven't already. And I'm going to catch you guys next time. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the 